So in our last video we talked about Thomas Hunt Morgan's fruit fly experiments in which he actually determined the idea of linked genes that there was something that was breaking Mendel's law of independent assortment or that disrupting the predictions that the Punnett square according to Mendel's laws was predicting. And he also discovered that the linkage was also broken somehow. So there's two things happening here and he's going to be trying to explain them after seeing these results. The results of course were that the Punnett square predicted an equal ratio of children in this particular cross between a heterozygous for two traits and someone who was homozygous recessive for all traits, which is basically an F2 cross, right? What he's doing here is he's doing an F2 cross between a heterozygous for both traits and someone who's homozygous recessive for both traits. And as you know, you're supposed to get a 50-50 ratio of people in both traits. And since you're looking at a dihybrid cross, because it's tracking two traits, it's tracking the, the wing shape and the color of the body, the ratio is supposed to be one to one to one ratio. And we talked about uh, this particular cross in the Mendel lectures. And on the last video, we also reviewed this cross just to clarify why the results should be expected to be like that but instead he got these results which made him realize there was something going on with the genes that did not go along what Mendel predicted that independent assortment as predicted by Mendel didn't really happen every time and so now he's trying to understand why this is happening so he studies he goes back to the actual process of meiosis to try to figure out what exactly is happening and he realizes that because of the separation of homologs, like Mendel said, there's usually independent assortment. So, for example, look at hum humans. We have 23 pairs of chromosomes. Chances of two separate genes being on the same chromosome are 1 out of 23. And so, normally, you're going to have traits that have nothing to do with each other and that separate completely independent. And then you do get a 50-50 ratio of, of these genes right they do truly have a completely independent assortment of, of of the genes because they're on different chromosomes and there's an equal chance like we talked about in the meiosis video in lecture series that these things are going to be splitting in different ways however if it's possible for two genes to be in the same chromosome you are not going to get this independent assortment that Mendel did instead you will get what actually Mendel rejected you're actually going to get the linkage between these genes you are going to get that because these chromosomes are containing thousands of genes of the same type. That means no matter what's happening with independent assortment, all the genes in that particular chromosome will travel together as they split around. So even if I split the homologs this way, those two genes are still here and those two genes are still here and so they would be traveling together. And that's the idea of the linked genes. Because chromosomes carry thousands of genes, genes within the same chromosome are linked which explains why people that have red hair usually have freckles and why do people that have black hair usually have dark color eyes. But we also saw that sometimes people who have dark color eyes uh, don't have dark color hair and some people with dark color hair don't have dark color eyes. So there's something that seems to break the linkage that should be there most times. And now he, he goes back to meiosis and he identifies a peculiar process that was discovered by someone else, but he actually put this together to figure out that the idea of crossing over, that because the tetrads are forming during meiosis, doing here on prophase one, right? So remember, doing prophase one, crossing over will take place. And because of that crossing over, you're going to end up getting uh, different combinations of chromosomes which are separating during anaphase one. That means even if you do have genes within the same chromosome, chances are they could potentially be separated by crossing over. And now he has the answer for his thing. Crossing over, as seen here in the bottom, re creates recombinations of the genes, which explains those recombinants that he saw on his fly study. And so he ties in what he actually found out with, with the chromosome. Everything that's happened during meiosis, Things in the same chromosome are typically linked, but because of crossing over, the linkage is broken, or there's breakage of the linkage that he expects. But that means that there are two things here, which are screwing up Mendel's law of independent assortment. First, if two genes are in the same chromosome, they do not independent assort, they go together, they're linked. Second, they should be linked, but they can be broken by crossing over in case of um, 
this process that happens during meiosis. And then that leads us to the idea of recombination frequency. We thought without crossing over, you would only make two types of gametes, right? Like we talked about. Without crossing over, you would make just the parental gametes. You would never have a situation. Look, look at this. If you have, for example, the thing we looked about before, someone who had one chromosome, which was big A, big B, so he only had the, homo the dominance in one chromosome. And the other chromosome, he had the, res the recessive. So then we're talking about someone who was homozygous, heterozygous for both traits. Someone who was like big A, little A, big B, little B. So he's heterozygous recessive for both traits. If these genes were linked, okay, and in the same chromosome, uh, and there was no crossing over, you can only make these, just the two um, parental gametes, like he predicted was going to happen. But because of crossing over, you can actually make all of the gametes in, in the drawing. You can make the parental gametes and the recombinant gametes. So even if their genes are in the same chromosome, because of crossing over, you can get all the combinations possible. So it's like we talked about in gen on, on the meiosis video. Independent of assortment creates variety. Crossing over creates even more variety because genes that should be linked become unlinked by crossing over. So there is truly independent of assortment, right? Because crossing over happens, there should be truly independent of assortment. However, that's not the case because there's something else that Thomas Morgan discovered. The how often these things were crossing over were not exactly 50-50 ratios, the way it should be in order for you to get independent of assortment. So he found out that doing meiosis, crossing over does happen, and so you create gametes of all types like we just saw. You create the gametes like we talked about, which are look like one parent, or the gametes that look like the other parent, but you also create the recombinant gametes that look like neither of the parents, right? Now, if this crossing over establishes an independent assortment, you should get that one-to-one -one ratio that you expected. However, when you get that mother that created all those kinds of gametes, and you combine with the parent, like we saw before, that only has that one kind of gamete, you end up creating a ratio that is not a one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one ratio, but you actually create a ratio like this. And you can actually see in this drawing what's happening. In here, this gamete is combining with that one. So like you see that here. And then you that will happen... 965 times out of the total amount of times of the 2300 offspring. Almost as if this is happening more often than anything else. So you do not have independent assortment even with crossing over. Even with the breakage of the linkage, you're not getting true independent assortment. So there's something that's going on here. Um, then you see that the second type, you're going to get um, sometimes... You, this, you're going to get this combination, but you're going to get this less often than you're going to get the first combination, right? And then for your third combination, you're going to get that even less often. The recombinant gene, you're going to see that even less often. And even less often, you're going to get the last combination like this. So you see that there is something going on here. But either way, the parental phenotypes are more common than the recombinant phenotypes, but there's something... To, that's called a recombination frequency, or how often you see recombinants instead of the parental pheno phenotypes. All right. So notice that these are the ones again that we're supposed to see more often, or 50-50 percent of the time. And instead, we're going to get this recomb recombinants less often than we should. He comes up with this idea of a recombination ratio, so or, or the recombination frequency. Now, that recombination frequency is basically the number of recombinants. So you get these two numbers over here, and you add them up together, and you put them there. And this is the total number of offspring that you collected. And you get that multiplied by 100, and you get an actual percentage of recombination, or how often the genes will be recombining. And in other words, how often you end up getting looks, which are not the parental looks. You know? So... We're going to be talking about this on the next video, but the next step is getting this recombination frequency is making sense out of it. Uh, Thomas Hunt Morgan made sense of why this was happening. He understood that meiosis was causing this process by independent assortment being broken because of linkage, because genes were in the same chromosome. And he also figured out that because of crossing over, 
that linkage was sometimes broken, but in a way that did not create true independent assortment. In other words, not a 50-50 ratio, but much different than that, in that depending on the trade, you had a different recombination frequency or a number of, of recombinants out of the total number of offspring. So that wasn't really 25 uh, 50% of the time the way you would expect on an F2 cross, but they were actually uh, much less than that. You see only about 17% of the time. So what exactly is happening? Why is there linkage and why is there breakage of the linkage sometimes and why that only happens in a certain ratio that does not match Mandel's ratios is the next question that was answered by one of uh, his students. And we'll talk about that in the last next video.